is to log in. We shall immediately kick off to what has brought all of us here. I can already see some of the panelists logged in. And um, in case I can get a, a signal from the Bakash media team, then we shall kick off with our program. But in, 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 the, in the remaining minutes, you can be utilizing the inbox session. Tell us where you come from, what you do. And um, yes, let's connect, let's network. It starts now. Yes. I would like to welcome Monique, Monica. Kavuma, you are very welcome here. She's one of our panelists for today. I cannot wait. Really, I cannot wait to see what she has to say and hear and learn and unlearn and learn again. Yes, it's going to be a wonderful experience. I can promise you that. Monique Kavuma is the Chief Operation, Operation Officer in the Innovation Village, yes. Um, also in the building, we have Enoch, Mr. Enoch Nkoranga, who happens to be the founder and team leader, Lead Minds Africa. Wow. You people cannot miss, invite a friend already and let's utilize the inbox session. I can see others are already logging in. But in the meantime, utilize the inbox session, tell us what you do. Yes, I have already introduced myself, but I'll do it again for those that have just logged in now. My name is Anne Mbabazi. I am a host, I am a poet, I am an influencer, and uh, you can follow me on the different platforms. I go by Anne Mbabazi7 on Instagram, Anne Mbabazi with a 7 at the end on Instagram, Anne Mbabazi with a 7 on Twitter, Anne Mbabazi, just Anne Mbabazi on Facebook. And um, I have a YouTube channel for my show. It's called My Story Show. You can type My Story Show and add Anne Babazi. Like, comment, subscribe, do all those nice things we talk about. Yes. And you can as well follow the Bakash Media Foundation on YouTube. Just after this show, a little bit, a few minutes later, we shall have this same video or this same discussion pinned up on our YouTube channel so you can go log in and, and subscribe. Yes, I have got a signal already from the team. Um, allow me to kick off with our program today. I don't know if Bruno is ready. He could uh, pin up the program and, and the agenda so we can all know what's going to come first and what's going to come next. But in the meantime, I will tell you what is going to happen right now. Ladies and gentlemen, I can see our panelists are already here in the building. So allow me, ladies and gentlemen, welcome um, one of the leaders or one of the representatives from uh, Bakash Media Foundation to unmute, tell us more about this wonderful platform and, and tell us about the fundraising that I've heard about in the corners. Yes, I give you a chance to unmute and tell us more. Okay, I think. Um, uh, thank you. Thank you so much, Anne. Uh, my name is Bruno. Um, I'm a co-founder and operations lead for the foundation. I welcome you all to this session, our second episode of uh, the Career Essential Series. Um, I welcome our dear panelists, uh, in your capacities, our partners, and the general audience. Thank you so much for sparing time to be part of this session. Uh, I welcome Mr. Isaac Bakashava. To, uh, to give remarks about um, opening remarks and about the fundraising that we are having. Thank you. All right, thank you so much, Bruno. I hope I'm clear, right? And am I clear? You are very clear, sir. All right, that's great. Uh, I welcome you all to this second session of, of the second season of our Career Essential Series. My name is Isaac Wakashava, I'm the team lead and the founder of Bakash Media Foundation, a youth startup that is majoring in career guidance, um, mentorship and skilling of youth in the higher institutions of learning. I welcome you all 
our dear panelists, I know we, I disturbed you and my team a lot with emails and calls late in the night, early in the morning. So, but I'm so, so much glad that you responded positively. Um, Mr. Isaac Semakade, whom I've known, and then uh, Mr. Eno Kunkranga, who is my longtime friend and a brother, and Miss Monica Kavma from the Innovation Village. Uh, the Innovation Village uh, also happens to be one of um, our partners and also it's where our offices are in at Tinder Complex for coming. Here is um, a campaign we're running currently. Uh, if our administrator is able to share a screen with us. Mr. Bakashava, we cannot hear you. You can now, sorry. Yes, now we can, now we can. Yes, we are bridging the gap. So we're calling out to the audience and our partners on board. Uh, we've been partnering with, uh, we are partnering with uh, Birundi Charities and um, Opportunity Tracker. And I think they are on board. They are here today. So we thank you all for coming through. We are running a campaign currently where we are fundraising for the project. So we are coming up. Our administrator will share them with us at the end. We are running a career magazine the career series that we are running now. We also have career breakfasts and uh, the mastery class that is going to start in January. And our administrator later on is going to share with us the link where you can register. These classes are going to start in January. So kindly join us, support the cause. Uh, in our last session, we raised uh, 300,000 and now um, we have so far, this, this week uh, has ended, we have 450,000. So I thank you all that have been contributing to this so that in that we came up with this figure. And I urge you all out there, our audience and our panelists and our dear partners, please join us on this journey, support the cause. Abakash Media Foundation is here to bridge the gap between you stakeholders and the general community. And we organize these sessions weekly where we engage different resourceful personalities and change makers in our society. So please join us. Um, I think our administrator can share with us the accounts where you can uh, uh, you know, support us from and get out. I think Bruno, you can share the accounts where they can really reach, reach us out in case one is willing to support us. So this is what we are doing. Um, please join us and I'm looking out to have a great discussion today with you people. Um, I think from my team, uh, I wish you a fruitful discussion and Anne, please take it on. I will come you all. And thank you so much. Thank you so much, Mr. Bakashawa Isaac, who is the founder of Bakash Media Foundation. Thank you so much for that address and Yes, let's kick in through. I am going to give a brief introduction about our panelists today, and later on, we'll give them a chance to introduce themselves better. But I'll give my brief introduction about them, and later on, we shall welcome them and give them a time to speak and talk about themselves better. On, on our platform today, I am glad and privileged to inform you that we have Mr. Isaac Semakade, who is the founder and CEO of Legal Brains Trust. You're very welcome, sir. Please, we are expectant to listen to whatever you have prepared for us in line with our topic today, and we cannot wait to learn from you. We also today in our house, ladies and gentlemen, we have uh, Mrs. Monique Kavuma. You're very welcome here. She is the Chief Operation Officer, Officer sorry, the Innovation Village. And also in the house today, we have Mr. Mkuranga Enoch, and I am very privileged to have you as well. And uh, allow me, ladies and gentlemen, give them a chance to unmute and greet us. We shall start with Mr. Isaac Simakade, and later on we shall have Mrs. Monica, and, late, and lastly, we shall have Mr. Enoch Mkuranga. Thank you so much. Is that my cue? Yes, you're clear now. Is that my cue to go? Yes, it is. It is. Sir. 
how much time do I have earned? You can utilize as less as you can, but I'm going to give you five seconds. Thank you. I beg your pardon? You can utilize as less as you can, but I'm going to give you five seconds, if that's for fine with you, sir. Five seconds for? For the introduction, introduction, just the introduction of yourself. Yeah. Well, thank you. I think you did a wonderful introduction of me. Okay. Yeah. Uh, good morning okay. to you, and good morning to Isaac. Good morning to the many listeners on board. I'm happy to be part of this. Yeah, and, and so are we. We are very happy to have you here, sir. Um, let me welcome Madam Monique, Monica, Monica Kavuma. Please unmute and greet us and give us an introduction, if you don't mind. Hi. Hi, everyone. Hello. Can you hear me? Yes, we can. We can hear you. Good. Thank you for the introduction, uh, Anna. My name is Monica Kasiri Kavuma. I'm glad to be here. Uh, I mean, as we inspire, you know, the next generation of uh, change makers, I wish I had had the same opportunity while I was in your, in your shoes. Nevertheless, I'm happy to play it forward and see okay. as many young climb the yet ladder, whether in business or in careers, and you know, to hold the torch, yeah, for, and, and take this country where I went to go. So Monica is my name, and I'm a finance professional, and I've done this for the last uh, 17 years across the spectrum of uh, many uh, sectors, um, you know, from audit to uh, telecom sector to banking, uh, to the off-grid sector and now in the startup ecosystem. I'm really glad to be here and listen and learn. Again, 55% uh, of our population is youth. So I want to learn a lot from the youths on this, um, on this forum and also share what I can in terms of how I can help you hack the system and be able to reach where you want to reach in the shortest time possible. Thank you. Thank Over you so you. much. Yes, thank you so much, Madam Monica Kavuma. Um, allow me, ladies and gentlemen, welcome Mr. Enoch Mkuranga. Please unmute your microphone, greet us, and give us a brief introduction. Thank you. Hello, everyone. I am happy to be here and join the rest of you during this uh, session. I think it's going to be exciting. I'm already looking forward to learning from Isaac, Somakade, and uh, Monica and everyone on this call. I'm um, Kanguranga, as uh, Baba has introduced to me. And, uh, and uh, I run an organization called Lead Minds Africa. And uh, we really are into leadership development, education. Um, so I am happy to learn and also offer my, my insights. I, I hope it okay. will be very good. Thank you so much, Mr. Eno Koranga. And um, we are very happy to have your panelists and very expectant. I cannot get the right words, but we are very expectant to learn from you and get new tactics <laughs> of, the, of, 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 uh, of this world of networking and, and fastening um, meaningful connection in the career and business. Ladies and gentlemen, I would like to ask uh, Bruno if you could uh, give us the first poll as we get to know each other. I don't know if it's ready. Yes, it is. Ladies and gentlemen, there's a screen showing, there's a screen sh sharing on your screen. Um, together with me, we are going to answer these questions and uh, immediately after answering them, we shall go forth to the next thing. Um, I am imagining we are all starting at this time. The first question is, what is your level of education? If your, your level of education is high school, highlight the high school. If it is university, highlight university or others. That's if you've gone for masters and other learning levels, you can highlight that. And yes, I hope we're all done with that. And number two is what is your employment status? If you are a student, you can highlight that. If you are self-employed, you can do that as well. If you are a recent graduate, you can 
highlight what exactly you are. Or if you're unemployed, the other options as well. If you're employed full time, you can also highlight that. Which career sectors are you in? That's our third question. Are you in journalism? Are you in performing arts? Are you in international business and finance? Are you in agriculture, legal practice, medicine, um, mining and energy, tourism and hospitality, creativity, art, design, and innovate, innovation? Or are those? If your, your career is not mentioned here, please, you can, se you can select the others. Yeah. Uh -huh. Our fourth question goes, how did you get to know about this wonderful session? Was it from WhatsApp? Was it from Twitter? Was it from an email, a phone call, a friend or colleague on Instagram or Facebook or other platforms? You can highlight what exactly that, that is that you got us from. I hope you're all doing the same just like I am and we are going to finish at the same time. Did you attend last week's episode of Career Guidance, which was our first episode of the second season? Yes, and if you did, please press the yes. If you didn't, it's okay. Just press the no. And if you're not sure, it's fine. Yes, and our sixth question is, what is your expectation from our session? Yeah, you can answer this. You can either tell us networking, empowerment, mentorship, training, employment, or others. We've given you options. So I am hoping we are all done. I have just submitted mine. I hope you have all submitted already. And yes, thank you so much for that, for, for that wonderful session. Whoever has practiced in that or participated, I want to thank you and that is helping Yes, so we're going to kick off to our next agenda, which is the discussion, which we all are here for, or all are expectant for. Ladies and gentlemen, allow me to start this wonderful section of learning. Yes, our first question goes, what drives you? I, I would like to follow the order that I started with, if it is fine with our panelists, and if it's not, we can still change the order, but in the meantime, I would like to request to start with uh, Mr. Isaac Semakade. Our first question goes, what drives you? What drives you, question mark? Or I can paraphrase the question with, why do you do what you do? Like, what inspires you to do that that you're doing? Allow me and unmute your microphone. Mr. Isaac Semakade, you're welcome to answer the questions of what drives you. I think the sense of mortality, the fact that we are here to die, it's plain and simple, and we found humanity, we should live it better. That's what drives me. Okay, thank you so much. Mr. Semakade is driven with the fact that we are all going to die someday. I think that's a wonderful motive. Thank you so much, sir. Allow me to welcome Madam Monique Kavuma to give us her thought of what drives her, what pushes her to do this thing that she does every single day. Please unmute your microphone and tell us. Thank you. Yeah, so my mic is unmuted. Thanks, uh, Anna. Uh, well, for me, it's uh, being a contribution. Yeah, it's really what uh, keeps me going. So every time I wake up, it's what, am I, what have I done today? To, if it's to my children, if it's to myself, if it's to my community, uh, if it's at work, what am I doing today to be a contribution, to pull my weight yeah, and generate value today so that I can earn my place tomorrow? Thank you. Okay, thank you so much, ma'am. Um, allow me to welcome Mr. Eno Kuranga to tell us about the same question. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Anna, for this uh, amazing session. I think what drives me is uh, the, the idea to make a contribution towards changing the African narrative. Uh, so, you know, we are living in, in a continent that is said to be the youngest in the world with over 80% of its population under the age of 35. So, but yet at the same time, we, 
Africa is described as, you know, less developed, full of uh, poverty, political conflict, unemployment. So I feel like that is, that is what drives me is seeing myself as someone who is contributing towards creating an Africa that has an enabling environment where someone, where every young person uh, can thrive and actually, you know, is proud to live. So that's, that's what makes me wake up every morning, um, look, connecting the dots on how I can contribute towards the Africa we want. Okay, thank you so much, Mr. Enoch. That is a wonderful perspective of what can motive. It's in fact a wonderful motive. Um, right about now, I want our panelists to give us a journey of how their career has driven from where they started from to where they are. I think that could be very inspiring to most of us out here today. I would like to know the journey of your career, how you've driven it, where you started from and where you are right now, how the journey has been, how did you work it through, what challenges did you face? Yeah, thank you so much. I'd like to start with Mr. Isaac Semakade, if you do not mind. Um, you forgive me, I'm actually a very shy person. I, I find this question requiring me to talk about myself. I like to hear what people who have been keynote observers say and stuff. Um, but um, briefly, I'm a consummate practitioner of the law with a bias in social justice and social change. And that means I am as well better understood as a lawyer and an activist. I've worked with uh, civil social change agents during and after my education. And that's how I'm here. I've worked in fields like education law, helping and working with students and teachers in the setting of a, an education institution. Uh, to the extent that intersects with the rule of law, their are remedies and reform, uh, articulating you know, both um, on a given on a case by case basis. We've worked in uh, local government law, we've worked in public law, uh, helping citizens articulate their rights as against the state and other non state actors. I've also worked in uh, labor law helping improve the condition of labor in Uganda, the labor relations in Uganda across the board. Yeah, um, earlier on I worked in a corporate commercial law firm. I, I had no joy there. Mm -hmm. I'm now happy where I am, thanks. If you don't mind, I'd like to continue asking you, why didn't you have joy in the law firm? Or was it that uncomfortable for a lawyer like Yeah, it was you? suffocating, actually. The office was in a box at workers' house. Okay. It, it looked glamorous from outside, but quite, and I was quite unimpressed being inside. Um, the, the, you were concerned with flimsy business so, um, of very elite and showy people, it, 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 it's uh, most of them were corporations. I, I, I had no interest in that. Um, okay. I, I thought the, there was much for, to do if we wanted to achieve generational change. These were people interested in preserving the status quo, extracting as much they could from the condition and giving profits to, you know, people mostly abroad, yeah, that's it. Wow, thank you so much, Mr. Isaac Simakade. That makes you a patriotic citizen, and I am actually liking that most about you. Thank you so much, sir. Let's have um, Madame Monique Kavuma, Monica Kavuma, introduce her, her journey of her career, how it started from the grassroots to exactly where she is right now, inspiring most of us. Hey. Thank you, Anna, and uh, good morning, everyone, once again. Hmm. Yeah, so um, I've always wanted to be, uh, I've always wanted money, but money that I've worked for. 
yeah yeah because you know in this country or you know yeah there, there are all these connotations as to how ladies get money i've always wanted money that i've worked for that's a i underline that and in gold and in italics yeah so right from when i was young uh i used to be the 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 bank for my mom at home so I, I, I really started being like an accountant or someone who handles people's money from the time I was young. And yeah, I looked up to, you know, all the bankers, all the, you know, I, I, I wanted that career because I thought that's where money resided. Yeah, like you have to be close to the money and, you know, do with it what it is. So anyway, long story short, I did uh, accounting and started off my career in an public farm, yeah. I started off my career in a little farm. It was really, it was great. It was a great, uh, the greatest experience I've, I've ever done. It cemented what I really wanted. But uh, like Isaac said, um, you then realize that, okay, now that- I think I'm, we have lost you. Hello. Uh, can, you, can you hear me now? Can you hear me? Yeah. <clears throat> I think I can. Can you hear me? I can, can you hear, hear you on my. Why did I stop? Anna, can you hear me? Hello? Yes, I can okay. hear you. Can you hear me? All right. So, why did you stop? Hello? Why did you stop? Why did, I, why did you lose me? <laughs> I lost you at accounting. Yes, you so I started off my, yes, I joined an audit firm uh, that best of its uh, at the at its time, Price House Coopers, a place I cherish to the core, and it taught me quite a bit. And uh, six years into the into my career there as an as a young accountant, I was exposed to quite a number of sectors. I had to deal with quite a number of senior people as I did my audit work. And then I realized uh, that, yeah, I wanted to do, to be where the action is. So I left consulting because that's really like consulting and went into action. I went into industry, into the banking sector. Yeah. Uh, and uh, while there, I also went, ventured into the telecom sector, orange at the time. But the one thing that keeps driving me, even in my professional career is, uh, is the love for, for uh, financial independence, yeah, for humanity, in terms of everyone deserves to live uh, a humane lifestyle. It doesn't matter how much you earn, but um, yeah, it, it, you need, it needs to be dignified. And why do I say this? I realize that when people live corporate life, they go, um, you know, I mean, life changes when the paycheck goes away. So my calling then turned to how do we create financially independent uh, people, yeah? From kids to corporates, to young adults, to, you know, so that when the paycheck goes away, you're kind of re um, ready to, you know, to be without the paycheck because it's kind of enslaves you, yeah? So yeah, from that time, I then uh, ventured into uh, preaching the financial wellness, um, you know, way of life, like what life do you want to create? How do we start on that journey? And my advice out there for everyone who has got a job, start planning for your um, exit from that job on day one when you get that job, yeah? Because we've seen how the shifts are, do, are becoming in the world. And it's important that, you know, you always have, when I don't have this, how ready am I to sustain myself? But yeah, so, um, and that's, that's now on my, you know, the be a contribution part of me that I want to use. Because when you realize many of us, even accountants, when we are handling budgets and, uh, you know, um, budgets for big multinationals, advising, we don't advise ourselves. So our lives are fall in shambles because we're not ready to apply what we apply to the corporates in our lives. So yeah, that's the, that's the place that I decided to venture into. Yeah, and then when I came later on, then I realized I, I joined the Innovation Village to, 
to do exactly that to, you know, the startups, the entrepreneurs who are, you know, trying to be a contribution, trying to make a mark, trying to redefine themselves and apply myself as well and, you know, help out. So yeah, that's been my journey. Thanks, Anna. Thank you so much, Monica. Um, my network has been an issue, but I am fixing it. And yes, let me welcome Mr. Enoch Mkuranga to take us forth and tell us more about his journey, most especially his career journey. Thank you so much, sir. Um, I actually wanted to ask if I'm hard to clear it from my end. Can you hear me? Hello. We can hear you, Eno. Yes, great. So for me, um, my career journey has been uh, and is, has been a long one and like an interesting one, but uh, and is still continuing. I grew up in a in a village, but I was always fascinated by the idea that someone was a president of the country. So I grew up, I think, with a political mind, and I was interested in, in two things, in becoming the president and a lawyer. Uh, but along the way, I really, it is, I started to change thoughts. Because, you know, growing up in a village, that's, that's all you know, and, you know. But I, I, I wanted to, I started, I started get, getting interested in, the idea of, of, of getting people out of poverty, expanding access to education. And that is how I got into becoming a, an advocate for children's rights to education. Um, and then, you know, I went, to, I went to a school, I went to a high school that actually offered leadership development and mentorship. So I realized that that was also a huge gap around the, the country. We have millions of young people in schools, but, but I, I, I realized that we didn't have an opportunity that I had going in through a school that you know uh, offers career guidance, uh, puts you on a journey to discover who you are. And the moment I continuously understood who I was and my values and came to Makere University, I was more interested in a, in a course that orients me into that direction. And that is how I ended up into um, community development, traveled to Rwanda, worked to, in Rwanda for two years with the cornerstone development, came back to Uganda, uh, led African Children Mission, uh, which, which expands access to, to education in Uganda and uh, in Kenya. Then, you know, I, I also embarked on the journey of founding Lead Mind Africa to, to, to create opportunities for young people to live to their full potential. So that's, that's where I am. Uh, I'm still on that path uh, of, you know, creating change makers, uh, continuing to discover who I am. Uh, so, so far that's, that's that's where, that's where I am. Hello? Anna? Is my network okay? Yes, but I don't know if you heard everything I said. I did hear what you said. I did. Yeah, thank you so much. Um, our next question is... Um, I'm going to request Bruno to mute the, the other speakers that are not invited. Thank you so much. Our next question is, uh, to what extent has fostering meaningful 
connection contributed to your growth and success. We've clearly had your journeys of your career and the different grounds and fields. And it seems we have lost you. Yes, I, before I, my network interfered again, I was in, in, in Yes, like I was saying earlier, I our next like how we have had your journey in career growth and the different fields that you worked in. So we would like to know how has this connection thing been of help to your to your growth. Thank you so much. I don't know if I'm clear, but we've lost Anna a lot there. <clears throat> um, Isaac, can you get some guidance from you? Who should speak? Um, yeah, maybe if I can, if I can interject. Anna was asking how how fostering meaningful connections have helped you with your career and uh, our business? That's the question she was posing. Okay, I, I, I must confess that I was hesitant to accept the invitation to speak to an audience of young trendy and impressionable Ugandans on such a topic, fostering meaningful connections in careers and business, uh, largely for two reasons. I think the first one is there was a genuine fear of being misunderstood that I'm, I would be endorsing what you got that disgusting courage of godfatherism. You know, what most Ugandans, to be blunt, have this notion that success in careers and business is attributed uniquely to some sort of close proximity to an inherently corrupt and disgraceful political or tribal figurehead 
some sort of puppeteer that can string you up from one place to another and voila, you're now an overnight success. So I need to stress from the beginning that I denounce Godfatherism and, and connections should be understood in a more basic sense of the need to connect neighbors, friends, classmates uh, at, a, at a vertical, lateral level, but also at a hierarchical uh, level, but not in the sense that it is purely for political, social advancement or upward mobility for its sake. This just creates so much anxiety and mental depression for so many people. I think for me, meaningful connections that have moved my career are those that have helped me to be grounded, to be reminded of what is the, what is the cause, what is the generational cause in which I must be invested, what is the great purpose of life, you know. Um, those that meaningful commissions are those that have helped lower my anxiety, my, you know, help with emotional balance, friends that make, give you a good laugh and encourage you to tap into your talents, improve them, you know, for the sake of self-fulfillment, not to be seen to, to achieve certain status. That is not success in a career, that is careerism. Uh, and in terms of business, again, I'm, I'm, I'm not qualified to speak to business, but to the extent that law is a business, meaningful connection is with clients and, and, and lawyers in business succeed through the reputation that is spread by word of mouth. So your connection with the, with the taxi driver, with the border border guy, is 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 what keeps you is, is what gets you to the top so i want to make that important you know to the extent that loneliness is dangerous is harmful the connections that have that i put a premium to are those that help beat loneliness you know beat improve your immunity your resilience as a member of society the second fear i had was that I would be misunderstood as endorsing the pretense that the current political, social, and economic conditions in a post-colony like Uganda can guarantee success in a career or business, you know, on your own terms with, without any strings attached to your accomplishments if you set out for a dignified, purposeful, prosperous life. There are so many young people who aspire to be to be better, to do better. But then there are these structural bottlenecks that are in their path. And, and not all of them have the capacity of critical thinking to beat those bottlenecks. Now, a very seductive argument can be made that a mythical figure a god of sorts can remove those bottlenecks for you and you cross the Red Sea. Um, well, that is utter nonsense. There is work to be done if you choose to pursue a career or business. There's work to be done, which is of an intellectual nature. For you to understand that you're living on a post-colony, a former plantation, a, a jurisdiction that was gazetted for exploitation, tyranny, and oppression, you know, as, and, 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 and this has to be understood and how it affects you today. It has to be understood. You need to begin from that reality. Otherwise, if you, if you just take this at a nonsense that the people that have, have not done anything to remove these bottlenecks, but rather have, collaborated with those that succeed through these colonial structures are, are going to give you a pathway 
you're getting it wrong. That system fails. That's why there's just too much dropouts. You know, people pursue careers, they go to education, and there's just too much dropouts, and only a few people make it. Ah, uh, so I, I, I was afraid that this would be the misconception that would come from participating in something like this. But I hope with this disclaimer, I can be properly understood to say that connections are important in their most most basic purpose, which is to to promote our self fulfillment as humans that live live you know live in a shared space. Um, and must improve it for the common good. Yeah, I, I hope that makes sense. I, I, I give the floor to others to speak. Thank you so much, Mr. Isaac. Yes, I am finally back. Thank you so much. And um, it is a, a new perspective of everything. I thought connection is a good thing in all aspects, but God, um, the good, the God, the God fathering thing makes it, gives it more light to me that it's, it's actually supposed to have another perspective of viewing it. Let's welcome Madame Monique Kavuma to give us her view of how or to what extent has this connection thing contributed to her growth and success? Thank you so much. Thank you very much, Anna. And thanks, Isaac. Uh, I like the new way of, you know, Godfatherism um, of that school of thought as well, because yeah, growing up, I had to fend for myself and, and yeah, walk my way because you can never rely on, you know, uh, yeah, free lunch. There's no free lunch in my school of thought, yeah? So for me, really, it's, uh, it's important to identify, just a minute, I have some noise in the background, just a minute. Yeah. Can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. From my end, it's, it's, it was, sorry, I had noise in my background. Apologies for that. Uh, from my end, it, it, it was very important earlier on, I noticed that I had to uh, identify a mentor, yeah? People who've walked the journey. And also not, and also be, put my best foot forward. It's either best or nothing from my end. So I had to put in the time. And uh, these are very high standards. And how do I do Like it's continuous investing in myself and identifying the mentors who can help me walk the journey. Yeah, not to create passes for me, but to, to help me see what I'm not seeing. Because when you're young in the game, you cannot learn everything on day one. But you can hack the system by finding the right uh, people to mentor you, to coach you, and also the, the, the company that I keep. Because again, I believe that um, you're the sum total of the five people you hang out with. So show me your friends and I'll tell you who you are, that kind of thing. So yes, Godfather, Godfatherism doesn't work. I don't believe in it as well, but um, it's really, defining why you, you know, what's your why, what's your inner purpose? Yeah, what would you do even if all the odds were against you? And then following that North Star, yeah, as your guiding principle, because many things will come by, many people will come giving you opportunities, but if they don't align with your North Star, then it's okay to turn them down because at the end of the day, it's your energy levels, it's you, it's you putting down your name to something. So mentorship, coaching has really helped me. And also every day, yeah, what value am I creating that day? Because that is the, you know, that is the currency that I trade that will help me get to where I want to get to tomorrow. Not necessarily the degrees or you know, who knows me or whatever, but it's what am I doing today to guarantee or to book my slot in, in you know, when people are discussing who needs to do what, yeah, will my name come up? 
am I earning my place today? What am I doing to put in the time yeah, to, to get where I want to get to? So I, I can say those three things have really helped me a lot um, because obviously um, if, I look at, if I look back in my career and all the jobs that I've done, it's been people who I've worked with uh, you know, sharing the opportunities. You know, someone is looking for uh, someone. Yeah, and I think you'll do the best job on it, apply for it, yeah. Uh, okay. And really, these days, people get so many applications, but they, already, they want to know who can do the job, yeah. Uh, so I cannot, I'm not qualified to talk on the business front, but yes, from a, from a career side, yeah, those have been my guiding principles. Thank you. Thank you so much, Madame Monique. Let's hear what Enoch Nkuranga has to say about it. <laughs> Uh, let me let me even kick off by um, by laughing a little bit. I have liked what Isaac has said. Oh my goodness! Um, so thank you, Isaac. Thank you, Monica, for your submissions. But let me start by saying this: what Isaac has uh, said is actually true. Godfatherism is killing the entrepreneurial spirit in Uganda. That's where we need to start. Um, I have encountered many young people who have amazing ideas, but they are afraid of working on them uh, because they think those who have been successful in the field had someone, like they had a connection, they had someone who said, you know, you go, you go there and they give you money that you need. And, they, and these young people think the entrepreneurs that have been successful have not put in the much needed work. So young people are, are, are afraid of starting projects because they think you have to have a good father or, you know, you have to be connected to the big people, the way, the way that expression has come into play in Uganda. You have to be connected into, to big people. Um, so how has the uh, relationships really supported my, uh, my career growth? I think for us who are into the non-profit sector, the social entrepreneurs, your initiatives will, will thrive based on the intentional relationships that you build with with people uh, people who, who who know someone who can fund your project people who can offer their knowledge and skills people who can become who can offer more support uh or peer to peer support on the journey of building your initiative. So there was there was someone who was following who was following what I post on, on Facebook and 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 I got to know later that they they inspired him when he could sit in his office and and read things on my timeline they really inspired him and he put in place two people Look for me. It's me on my phone. I don't know if you lost me there. Thank you. So someone was someone was calling me, and and I'm saying I was asking if you lost me there. We kind of lost you, but now you're back. Okay. So I was saying that the two people looked for me. I was posting inspirational things on on my Facebook. And uh, two people looked for me, called me into their office and said, their boss told me, you know, we have a job for you. You are inspirational and I think you fit perfectly into our organizational character. So the first job I got was because uh, of the way I was using my social media and someone 
connected me. I mean, someone called me to their office. From that time, he has become like my reference. He refers me to opportunities um, because of the way like I conduct myself and also I put in the work. That is the most important aspect. Uh, so when when I when I left when I, I started working with African Children's Mission in Uganda, I got a mentor. And when I started building lead mines, this mentor has been with me every step of the way. And you know, he refers me to, to people that I need to talk to. So um, meaningful relationships are very powerful in preparing our career growth. But the most important thing is you have to put in the work. Don't just sit and say, I need a person to, to make me successful. No, they have to meet you at a point where you are working and your work speaks for itself. Thank you. Anna, you are on mute. Anna, your microphone is, is muted. Pardon me, pardon me. Pardon me, everyone. Um, I was trying to thank Mr. Enoch for the address and as well saying that his address or his perspective of all this drives me to my next question. He actually says it is not all bad. Conne connection is not all bad, but you still have to put to invest in some work to show what you have on plate, to actually work hard for it. There's nothing that comes in a silver plate, which I think is not contradicting with what Mr. Isaac addressed in the first place. So that leads me to my next point, my next question indeed. Um, how do you maintain or grow? How do you maintain this already achieved connection? Like for example, Mr. Enoch has told us he, he got a connection from his posts, from the way he was presenting himself on his social media platforms. So how do you maintain this connection that you've got from the people that are going to actually lead you to next, next path in your career? Let's have Mr. Isaac address this. Thank you so much. And then later we shall have Monique. I will come in after Enoch has addressed. Thank you so much. Am I clear? Can you see me properly from here? Yes, we can still see you. All right. So um, the, I'll be brief and brutal. It is through self-awareness. That's how you maintain, that's how you grow meaningful connections. But self-awareness is not a state in which people are born or find themselves either through education or learning or conversation. No, there's a lot of work that needs to be done. There is a lot of experience, adventurism, there's a lot of living that, that helps you understand the contours of your brain, of your emotions, and the limits of your ability, the content of your body, of your, you know, what you can do with your hands, with your legs, with your speech, with your action, if you can have any influence on anybody near you or beyond you. So self-awareness then becomes a goal. Unfortunately, self-awareness isn't the goal of Africa, of the education we receive in Africa. The, the, the essence of the education that we still receive is to is to prevent self-discovery. So you know about prairies in Canada and nothing about the drainage system in Katwe and how it impacts life. So that in itself, you know, is a stark reminder that perhaps those who go to school in Africa are incapable by design of building meaningful connections. 
Yes, that is the start clear. That's the first lesson of self-awareness. So, and I want to say this, it's, we need to, because it doesn't get said enough. Connections are not entirely useful. Since the goal is self-awareness, then you don't even need connections. If you are the ish, you will attract connections. Parasites, leeches, gold diggers will come to you. You don't need to search out any connection. Once you have achieved the empire state of mind that Jay-Z speaks about in the song, New York, once you are the, the pollen, bees will swarm you. Whether you speak English, whether you have a degree, it, it's serious to matter. So connections are not the be all and end all of a career or a business. Credentials are content is. And I had a problem with this topic because it glossed over this issue. It, 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 it seems to put such a premium on connections. Connections are trash. Those that have value don't need good manners, don't need humility, don't need to obey their laws. Of, no, they create value. They are essential to society. It Just to interfere. Create, yes. Just to interfere. You talked about car. You don't need character. You don't need manners. You don't need discipline. I've heard of a, a phrase that goes, um, your talent takes you places, but your character keeps you there. Does yeah, that mean you are... Mediocre, if you want to be mediocre, those who are at the top end. For me, I, I'm speaking of extremities now. I, I, okay. The rest can speak to mediocrity. Okay. But I'm telling you, as a matter of fact, people who are young are starting what we call tabula rasa. Why should we train them for mediocrity? You're going back to what they taught you in school. We are not in right. school, Madam Anne. We are in the jam. Okay. 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 No one starts out with connections. We are not born with connections. We are born in a family. Okay. Those are material connections. And, and when you say connections, I think you mean to look beyond your family. Why? Why are we breaking apart our families in search of success in careers and business? Why are we abandoning what we are born into? Why are we trivializing it? Why, aren't we, why are we hating on ourselves and our families and our immediate people? So connections are not really as important as talent, as skills. What you call connections, you people, seems to be exhibitionism. See me, antiques. I am highly connected. See me. That is empty. Okay. That is exhibitionism. Substance, intelligence. Humility, likability. That is the oil. That is what oils careers and business success. You know, not connections. A pig, a pig can be highly connected it will not become a banker. It will not become a lawyer, an engineer, an architect, or a supermodel. So however much lipstick you put on a pig, it will not win the beauty pageant. That should tell you, that should put connections in stark reality for you. 
You can put Chanel on a pig. I still won't take it out on a date. Okay. I will look for something that attracts me naturally. So you need to prove yourself. Now, I want to, I guess that background, I think I've trashed connections enough for you. Yeah. How do you, is it grow and maintain? Well, in short, I come up with just a few things. The short notice you gave me. In the end, when you say connections, you, you seem to, to, to appeal to something of, of looking up, you know, looking to some sort of godot, some sort of goddess. I don't know if you've read the book by Samuel Beckett called Waiting for Godot. This is a mythical thing people wait for to change their lives, all their lives. That's utter nonsense. You need to create value for a connection known as a customer or a client. The rest is hype. You need to sharpen the saw, so to speak, and engage in the business to which you have apply the saw. For lawyers, it's the argument, not the voice. Nowadays, we are making all the arguments in writing. You know, uh, Paul Cafero, Jimmy Bongole Retire, Bob Marley, Tupac. Notorious B.I.G., Whitney Houston. These people made iconic music and they connected the world. Individually, each of them was an introvert. They did not get out to search for connections. No, all these people, I picked them out individually. Each was an introvert. Okay. They, 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 they came alive in their loneliness, they needed loneliness to create. Connections were what obstructed their art. That's very important. They all confessed in the time they lived. They said connection, social connection is what stopped them from becoming bigger. Uh, there's cut cover. These people, most of these people are geniuses. They died even early, but Paul wasn't, wasn't even 38. But he remains such an outstanding icon. You know, we have a day we celebrate for Bombay retirement. Malcolm X, James Baldwin, Martin Luther King Jr. These people had intellectual, conceptual mission clarity, which you can't get if you put such a premium on being seen everywhere. They used the crowds to present what they had cooked up, prepared alone. So how do you grow? How do you maintain meaningful connection even when you are dead by being great alone? Okay. I have more to say later. But I can okay. Thank it. you so much. Thank you so much, Mr. Isaac. Um, really, this is bringing out a new light, a new perspective, most especially to me. I don't know the rest of you, but I'm hoping it's the same to you. You do not have to look for connection, but if you put a lot of work, perfection, excellence, talent, like um, the previous speaker said, connection will actually look for you. Yes, let's have Madame Monique, Monica K K Kavuma address this matter as well. Thank you, Miss Anna. Uh, thank, you, thank you, Isaac, for yeah, schooling us yeah. brutally. Yeah. So my, mine is really just in addition to what uh, Isaac has said. Um, I won't be brutal because uh, you know, I, I, I've learned the, another way. So mine is really acknowledging that we are social beings, yeah? 
So our social, our social capital needs to be nurtured the way you nurture flowers in your flower garden. So just because you've made it or gone to you know, ladders where you didn't think you'd get to, just don't forget to go down a ladder and you'll find people waiting for you. So as you're up there, yeah, what are you doing? Yeah, to uplift others so that together, you know, all people around you can be a contribution and you're not the only blue-eyed person. Uh, I, for instance, I joined the Girls for Girls movement, uh, a movement that is there to nurture uh, ladies so that, you know, we can find, we can, we can build more ladies and, you know, create a force that can be able to change, you know, be, be changed makers in our space so yeah while you're at it yeah it's, it's good to look down and 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 pull up everyone else that you're not the only one who you know who is the know-it-all who is the alpha and omega so it's, it's been quite uh, instrumental uh, for me uh, the other one is also the fact that you need to build your brand yeah who are you what makes you different what makes you stand out what do you represent so your brand is what will keep people want to associate with you, want to refer you to, you know, for, for, for work opportunities or for anything, because no one wants to associate with, a, a, you know, a brand that is not nurtured, yeah? And as you build your brand, it's important to also keep investing in yourself. We have so many um, materials right now online, and I want to challenge the young people online here. How do you use your social media? Yeah, how do, you need, how do you use it to build you? Because a lot is there. I mean, we all want to go to Harvard, to Princeton and to all those schools, but right now we have resources uh, on our tablets that can actually give us the same material that you know, Harvard graduates access. So how are you using your, your data? How are you using your social media? That's a challenge to each one you know, on the call because they, we need to improve on ourselves every day. Yeah, because only people want to only associate with people who will not embarrass them, who will not ashamed them. So what keeps you different? Uh, the accolades you get uh, as you graduate from university are good, but they're not at all. Yeah, how do you keep building and, and pivoting and making yourself relevant in that as, as times change? So for me, it's uh, really uh, three things. Uh, build your brand, nurture it, add value to yourself every day, Self-learning is quite critical and also pivot, yeah? Pivot and be able to pull up people so that together we can all be the change that we want to see. Thank you. Okay. Thank you so much. Um, I don't want to take any long, we're left in less than 30 minutes and the audience wants to ask questions. But um, according to what Madame Monica has said, there's no contradiction with what Isaac um, Simakadi has addressed in the previous session. So allow me welcome Mr. Enoch Nkuranga to also address the same matter. And then we shall, as the, and, and to the audience, if you have a question, I'm going to give chance to only three people. Three, Enoch. Oh, so you, you want me to touch on uh, how do you maintain meaningful connection? Yes. Okay, very good. Uh, be authentic. That's how you maintain uh, meaningful connection. Don't, don't uh, say one thing uh, and then you know you are something else. For me, what has helped me to maintain meaningful connections is in the word authenticity. Don't be, a, don't be, don't be fake. Like there are people who, who say, you know, we are doing these big things and they are not actually doing anything. They are not even doing anything on the ground. Um, so for me, the thing is be authentic. Be real, be real. That's how people are going to, to stay with you. So what we are talking about right now is uh, you have met people, you have talked to them, and then you know they know you, you know them. But then for the long term, uh, how do you actually keep those relationships, those connections active and, and meaningful in that sense? So 
be real. That's, that's very key for me. That's the only word I can give you. But uh, this is something also we need to, to, to take into consideration. For me, there is, there is a hierarchy of, of, for relationships. There is a hierarchy for relationships. Um, there is when you meet someone, you meet, you know, you talk, you, 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 ex, you tell them your name, you exchange contacts, then there is level two is staying in touch. You continue talking to this person. They really get to know who you are. Okay. Uh, and you know, they develop interest. And then the next stage, which is stage three, is the trust. Now the person knows you and they can trust you. And you, can, you also know them, you can trust them. Then you go to level four, which is uh, like the business level where you are starting to say, you know, to talk to this person, this is the work I'm involved in. I feel really this is the kind of support that I need from you. Can you, do you feel you can support me or connect me to someone that can support me along this journey? The only challenge that happens is that we begin with stage four. You meet someone and you want to immediately start with doing business with them skipping stage two and three before you, you, you stay in touch and you create that kind of, you know, um, connection and then they reach a level where they, they, they trust you. So most people here want to start with stage four. They want to meet you and immediately do business with you. <laughs> so that's, that's, that's why some people don't stay actually in touch. They feel like you want to be more transactional than building an intentional relationship. So okay. we need to put into consideration that, but above all, we need to be authentic. Thank you. Thank you so much, Mr. Enoch. I think Mr. Enoch is not at all in contradiction still with what Madame Monique has talked about character. Build your brand, like she said, like he has also said again. Be real, do it real. Yes, I had asked the audience to give us three hands, three hands up, just three hands up. I have gone through the inbox session and you're all burning to give us what you, what, what you want to ask and know. Um, Yes, what you want to ask and know. So I'm giving you a chance to give you to give us your three questions. But looking through my questions that I have left and to what we have heard from our panelists, I feel answered. Mm -hmm. I feel answered to the next question. Though I will throw them out there just in case our panelists have something to say about them, they can still do it. Yes, um, our next question is. Um, uh, it's actually supposed to go to Mr. Isaac Semakade. How can connection help in tackling legal battles? <laughs> yes, sir. That's mine. Yeah, it's supposed to be yours. <laughs> <laughs> How can connection be liberated in tackling legal battles or conflicts? Well, <clears throat> Actually, a legal battle. Uh, the conflicts I'm getting here. You need smart connections to tackle a legal battle or connections. Um, uh, you need a good lawyer. That's a connection. And to identify a good lawyer from the cacophony of fake lawyers out there is is quite massive. So you need a good referral. You need a good recommendation. You need the right person whispering the right name in your ear. Okay. Um, a good lawyer to the contrary isn't expensive, doesn't drag things, sees them clearly, has good advice and so on and so forth. So you, um, I, I won't labor the point. Um, you, you, the lawyer can help you connect yourself to the right center for dispute resolution at court, the right court, the right personnel in court. 
and so on. And uh, of course, he's in charge, he or she would be in charge of the research. But you also need personnel, you need witnesses, you need investigators, you need people to give you emotional and moral support, and um, you need an intelligence ecosystem to, to check all these actors since you're engaging in a, a public you know, square, a conference is going to be resolved in a very public uh, forum. Uh, you, you need the best intelligence every morning, which means you need to you need counter intelligence as well. You can be fed on lies and things and things to intimidate you, worry you. You can spend enormously on useless things. So you need smart connections um, to to tackle a legal you know, conflict. Yeah. Um, I, I, I think that sufficiently answers it. Uh, of yes, course, thank the, you. That reminds, the creepy minds will think that uh, connections can, connections are like puppeteers, you know, they can move right decisions, you know, swing decisions in your favor and so on and so forth. It's actually true. We are struggling, we are going, we are, in, we are currently through an enormous period of decay in the judiciary of Uganda. Only one in five lawyers can express confidence about the judicial system. And those are the lawyers. Now, when you go to the people and the data is out there, they rank the justice law and order sector including the judiciary, the police, and all the other state apparatus concerned with justice, the lowest in terms of the institutions they trust. This is your data, IEG data, okay. transparency, national data. So, so there is a market. I mean, there's, there's, even, there's even emerged a market. There, there are so many distortions that have emerged in justice. Um, but to beat these distortions, you have to educate yourself about the basic structure of the justice, law, and order sector institutions. There are 17 of them. How they operate, who are there, and who is, who is a bad apple, who is a good apple. And what's the okay. medicine for each? You know, how do you, what's the policy for each? That is a duty every citizen has. And uh, until all citizens are concerned about this issue, you will lose your judiciary. Okay. There's no stranger out there who's going to come and improve this. Right. Okay, thank, thank you so much, Mr. Isaac Semukade. He has actually revealed to us what exactly you need in regards to connection. So in his previous speech, latest previous speech, he's showing us that connection is not too bad after all. <laughs> Thank you so much, Mr. Isaac. Um, let's have our next question come from Monique. Monica, sorry, um, pardon me for calling you Monique. Monica Kavuma, what instrument or procedure can one use to access social capital for business or a career? Thank you so much. Wow, that's really a mechanical question in terms of what instruments. Um, but hello, hello, yes, we can hear you. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, quite a mechanical question, but um, I, I guess it's burden on the softer skill. It's really uh, fundamental. Fundamental. I mean, and I'm not confident on the business side, or you know, but it should be fundamental. Yeah, find someone who resonates with your why, who understands what your why is. Yeah, because if they do, if you know, if if you want to work for social justice, they will not take you to do something that's contrary to that. So, what's your why? And find that person who can resonate with that, and then find a coach, find a mentor, and also read. Yeah, let's not say that you know we we, we finished school, we got a degree, and you know life goes on. No, read. 
Yeah, just because I'm an accountant doesn't mean I should not know about the legal system. Isaac has said, mm. yeah, you need to know the basics so that you can then maneuver and know, segregate the, 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 the good things from the, from the chaff. So find, find, the, find the right person. And how do you find the right person? Just ask the right questions, yeah? Because you know what you want to get to. So yeah, you have to do the work to get to where you want to get to. Yeah, it won't be on a silver platter. So it's yeah. really, yeah, mentorship, coaching, reading. Thank you so much. Read. Yeah. Thank you so much, madam. Um, yes, read, mentorship, get the mentorship. That is the best advice you could ever give, most especially to us. Thank you so much. Um, let's have um, Mr. Enoch's question. How can nonprofit? Uh, we understand that Mr. Enoch's organization is actually a nonprofit um, organization. So, how can nonprofit or oh, initiatives in particular develop social capital? How have they actually ah. helped you develop yours? Um, so, the most important thing is uh, find people who are passionate about what you do. Uh, that can start with, uh, you know, recruiting, for example, like recruiting a board of directors. Those are really people who, who know you, who believe in, who are passionate about the work that you are saying you are going to do or you are already doing, then infusing them the vision and let them be the ambassadors for the vision. Um, then, this is something that I have emphasized throughout this call. Do the work on the ground. <laughs> Don't just sit down and you're not putting in the work. So apart from, apart from uh, recruiting people and cultivating these relationships and them becoming the ambassadors for, for your cause, you really need to put in the work give them the story that they can sell. And that is how you continuously bring different people on board. Um, so that's, that's, that's how you build the social capital for around your work. Uh, you do the work, you recruit people who understand your vision and let them uh, be the ambassadors for your work. The more, more, the, the more people share about your work, and actually your work is, is, is credible, then the more it is going to, to stand out uh, to very many people who will be interested in, uh, for example, supporting you to scale it. Um, yeah. Thank I, you I don't so know much. If I have that your question. Yes, you have a lot. And I feel satisfied with your reply. I have seen a hand from our audience. I would like to give a chance to Kato to unmute and make it quick, ask the question, and then we shall go forth. Thank you so much. If you could do it as early as possible. Thank you very much. Uh, I would like to ask a question, uh, whoever can answer, but most likely maybe I'd like to hear the answers from uh, Isaac. Uh, he talks that at first he sort of uh, did have very uh, kind words for connection, and uh, but I kept hearing him using the uh, the right choice of words I would personally use, like referral and uh, looking at uh, you know career development. I am not um, to me the word connection. Most people here in campus they have misused it or misinterpreted it. Uh, if I look at personally, that's what I would say. But uh, for any person at any point, I think they need, uh, you know, they need connection. It's for an interview for anyone to recruit you. There is that, you know, point where, like he said, like ability, there are people with, you know, likable characters. So at every point, I feel you need connection, even at its lowest, it can always give you a move. Maybe that, so the main question here to Isaac is, at what point do you tell that, you know, the, the connection or the person you're connecting to, you know, is, is not, is sabotage, so it's, it's not uh, rightful. Uh, yeah. 
I hope that's clear. Y yes. Uh, the short answer is parasites are bad, elites are bad. Good ordinary people who really have content, credibility, and authenticity, as Enoch said, those are good people. Um, be careful of the parasites, be careful of the elites, be careful of people wearing medals and flaunting no who instead of no what. Thank you. Hello. And I'm done. And Thank you very much. Wow. I, I hope, uh, Kato, you are actually satisfied with the answer you have gotten. And yes, um, in, the, in the inbox session, Bakash Media is making clear on how you can get the scaling uh, program that is ongoing starting with January next year. So you can just pass by the inbox session, read through. If you pick interest and you actually want to acquire some skills, we've learned today that all we need is skill, 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 skill. Improve your personality, improve your brand, get some work done. And to get the work done, you need the skills. So Bakash Media has you covered, yes? And you can slide over in the inbox session, get to know what you need to know and whatever you need to know to start off with a program in January. I guess we have another hand and this is going to be our last hand. Um, uh, let me get the name right. Um, De Dennis, Dennis, can you please unmute and ask your question as quick as possible? Thank you so much. Um, all right, thank you so much, Anne. Uh, my name is Dennis Boa Oscar uh, from Mutindo Network. Um, so I would like to address my question to Madam Monique, Monica, sorry. Uh, so she's been speaking about uh, getting a mentor and uh, being coached. And this is one thing that every young person who is involved in uh, any activity or any programs would want. And uh, it would really seem so easy to get a mentor and a coach. But so how uh, my question comes in, how do you use the mentorship and coaching uh, from the different people that you've gotten to 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 actually achieve your purpose and uh, your goal uh, in your area of alignment. And in any case, um, uh, like I said, I'm from Tinder Network. And uh, how could I get in touch with uh, Madam Monica? So, thank you, Madam Monica. Thank you very much, thank you very much Dennis. Um, yeah, how do you get yourself mentors? Uh, I mean, there, there are quite a number of uh, organizations. I'm sure even Bakash uh, has a network of mentors, but really it's when you know what you want to grow in, again, starting from a self-awareness perspective, then the, you know, what you start to speak about is, I want to do this, I want to do this, and then people will connect you to who is doing that. I spoke about the Girls for Girls, movement that I'm part of. Um, and I, I know you're not, a, you're not a lady, but I'm just giving an example. Again, it came out of, I learned about it from a discussion I was having uh, with ladies on how, you know, we can make meaningful uh, connections and, and, and move, you know, and aspire, we know we aspired to, to, to get to places where we're not, yeah? And yes, it's not because we're not technically there. No, sometimes you need the right environment, environment to harness things that, that you've not learned. For me, I, I, I joined that. I was mentored, but I'm also a mentor there. Yeah, even at the workplace. We have uh, we've created kind of um, you know places where we can we can pass on 
these soft skills in our areas, different areas of competence, because everyone wants something. There's no one size fits all. So it's really creating the environment in your sphere of influence and also reaching out to people who are masters in, in, in that, that, what, that you want. I must say that it's work. Yeah, it's not just a conversation uh, that you go to someone and say, oh, mentor me. No, it's really work. It's, it's, it's time taken from a mentor, but also work from your end because there are things you want to achieve after a period. And the, uh, it's usually walking that journey with you. So you have to be ready to put in the work. Yeah. At first it may appear to be like another chore, but you want it and how, bad, how hungry are you will determine whether the mentorship journey is successful or not. So it's, it's, it's one of those where it's driven by you who wants to gain from that relationship. Uh, in terms of how you can get to me, uh, I mean, Bakash has my contact, but yeah, I can also put it in the chat just in case other people want to get, you know, to get in touch. Thank you. Thank you so much, Madam Monica. That's so generous of you. There are many out there that want to keep in touch with you. Yes, um, at this moment, I want, to, I want to inform all of you that we can still keep this conversation going on Twitter. You can keep the conversation flowing and use the hashtag of career in social series and also tag Bakash Media UG. So we keep the conversation moving all over Twitter. Thank you so much. But at this moment, allow me, ladies and gentlemen, welcome again, our representative, all the lead from Bakash Media Foundation to give us closing remarks and do not go anywhere because we have our last poll that you can actually use to help us improve our session for the better. Yes, let's ask uh, one of our representatives to unmute and thank you. Is there any? Bruno? Okay, I think we shall forego that with the interest of time. Let us go straight to our second poll. I would like to ask um, the technician or the administrator to share, the screen share our next poll. It's already there. So um, it's to help us improve future discussion. So the first question, I mean, like we did that first, we're going to do it together still. Um, right, right, sorry, right this session. Yeah, let's do this. Let's write it. I hope we are done with that. Um, which sectors should we tackle for in our next session? Which other sectors do you want us to tackle? We have um, a, a multiple of them. We have journalism and communication, performing arts, international business and finance, agriculture, legal practice, medicine and health, mining and energy, tourism and hospitality, creativity, art, design, and innovate, innovations. Yeah, and that is it for our last poll. I am submitting mine and hoping we are all doing the same. Thank you so much for logging in. You can follow Bakash Media Foundation on um, different platforms. You can follow them on Instagram, it's Bakash Media. You can follow them on YouTube. Just do it right now, go on your YouTube channel, type it. And I've seen they put the link to the Facebook page in the inbox session and still about the learning, the skill learning and all that that's starting in January. Check in the inbox session before this session is done as well. You can follow the, this platform uh, on, on, on YouTube, Bakash Media Foundation. And you can follow me as well uh, on Instagram, I'm unbarbaz7. YouTube is my story show, unbarbaz. And yes, thank you so much for logging in. We cannot thank you enough as the Bakash Media Organization, but we hope to have you again next Thursday. We shall have better better, better panelists. And as well, we shall have better, 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 better topics to discuss. It's about learning. It's about unlearning and learning again. You can as well support us. The fundraising that our lead talked about in the start, you can support us. I think the account number is pinned in the inbox session. Please, you can go there, check, 
send in whatever you have, it's, it can make a difference, actually a big difference for the betterment of this foundation. Thank you so much for logging in. Until next Thursday, I remain your moderator, Anne Babazi. I appreciate all that have stayed on until the last minute. God bless you and bye-bye.